So this is a big topic. Let me just start by saying that, but this will not be a long video because I would love to sit down and navigate a couple of subtopics to this, but I wanted to just get the conversation started and vent about one aspect of it. I want to talk about how I've been navigating the Christian hip hop space in the years, the many years that I've been doing this. Um, there are reasons for certain ways that I create the music personally that I don't kind of prescribe on other artists. This is just personal convictions and things that God's put on my heart that I want to do in the music to impact people in the way that they think about using their talents or anything uh, for the Lord. Let's talk about the swearing. Um, I believe that the believer is called to be aware of the impact of their words. Words can build up, words can destroy, words can manipulate, and ultimately the way we use our language should be to glorify God. Now, do I believe that all, you know, every kind of instance of swearing is sinful? No. I've seen people use certain words that in general population would be considered negative and, and devaluing and all that stuff and, and harsh. I've seen people use those same words to just simply describe normal living in a way that you could see their heart posture was not meant to be malicious or anything. It was just part of their vocabulary. I've also seen certain words that mean something to a group of people mean something else to another group of people. And so I'm not quick to cast judgment on the words themselves. However, for me, when it comes to something like swearing or derogatory uh, phrases or even racial terminology, um, I shy away from it. Now, despite what my convictions are about the use of certain terms, I do not include my stance on it or I don't exercise whatever I think is appropriate in the way I use language with my music. I intentionally try to make my music just plain English language with as little slang as possible. Why? Because I don't want there to be any narrowing of target audience strictly based off of the word choice that I use. I think to myself, I want a child to be able to listen to my music. I want teenagers. I want young adults. I want old people. Every age range. I don't want there to be a discrepancy. Now, there's things outside of swearing or certain terminology uh, ethnically or there's certain vocabulary or topics that certain age groups might not like, but swear words and racial language and uh, racial slurs and just all kind of different slangy vocabulary um, has certain negative connotations to it that would just drive an audience away right off the bat. And some people choose to stand in that and I don't necessarily think that, um, you know, I, 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 I'm not quick to be judgmental about that or quick to call them out, but that's their conviction and their choice. And I think there are some instances where it's not exactly sinful, the word choices that they choose to use. And I've seen some biblical breakdowns and guys kind of go into, well, this is why I use this and whatever. And, uh, you know, uh, generally speaking, I'm not for it, but I have seen some cases where I can kind of amen some sentiments. Um, but I know personally for myself, I don't ever want to narrow the lane. I want everybody to feel like they can have a safe space to hear my music. And it's not a matter of like being offensive or anything like that. It's just, I want to show kids in the art making that it doesn't need to be used to be excellent and to bring glory to God and to be quote unquote cool. I want to exercise excellency. I want to craft the art as best as I possibly can. And I don't want people to think that at the end of the day, what makes it cool is necessarily uh, 
the risks I'm taking in my choice of language use. Or if you're not a certain ethnicity or age group, you can't talk the talk that I'm talking, so to speak. And uh, I'm getting deep here. And we're not going to dive into it as much there. But the point being is that that is a choice that I choose with my music to intentionally create a music that anybody of any age and any ethnicity can look at and say, I can do that. Um, I can be inspired by that. And I don't have to be constrained by the type of cool vocabulary that I use or vocabulary that other people commonly use. I don't have to do that. I can speak my mind how I use my language regularly and I don't got to put any sauce on it. I can make my own sauce um, and I can just speak completely plainly and cleanly and I don't have to take risks with my word choice to make great music to the glory of God. Um, another thing is like certain culture appropriations like 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 jewelry and uh shoes and stuff like that you know there's things like you know i love chains and i like watches and i like jordans and stuff like that but those are things that i intentionally don't showcase why because um i want to show people that you don't have to dress a certain way and you don't have to you don't have to, there's not a, a rapper toolkit for what you have to wear and how you have to speak. You can come into this art space and be yourself. And I don't just like those things, I like other things. And so I take risks. I like to wear stuff that you wouldn't traditionally see a black guy at 34 wearing because it's stuff that I like. And I like to be risky in terms of not not risky for the sake of being provocative, but some of the things that I enjoy are naturally risky because they don't fit the normal profile that you would imagine for an artist like myself. And so I like to showcase, you know, I can wear a bunch of different stuff. I don't just got to wear the hoodie. Sometimes I might wear the slacks. Sometimes I might wear the sandals. And, and that's completely fine. And you can still make art and be cool and do it excellently to the glory of God. So with dress and jewelry and stuff, you know, a lot of times when I go and do my shows, you'll just see me in blue jeans and a white t-shirt. I won't even try and have on some insanely fresh kicks or anything like that, though I have them, because I want a kid to look at that and say, man, it's not about all the dress and the drip and all that, though you can have it, praise God for it. I don't need all of that. I can make my own choices on what I like to wear. And even if I had none of that, I could still do this at a high level for the glory of God. I'm trying to make the entry level so diverse, but yet so simple that everybody can get involved in this beautiful thing called hip hop at some level and not feel like they need to assimilate or appropriate in to their own style um, the things from the culture. Now, does that mean that those things are bad? Not at all. I grew up on these things. A lot of the things that I love come from what I observed in hip hop culture. However, when I showcase, I'm trying to show the other side of the coin. Hey, there's another group of rappers and singers that don't look like the stereotypical rapper of today, don't rap like or sing like the stereotypical artist, and they're equally as valuable and great at what they do. And so we're just breaking down the walls and allowing more people to come in. And a lot of people are shaped by what they see. If somebody doesn't look like them, sometimes they don't feel like they could be involved in it. Um, also to that point, sometimes if somebody says, well, I thought this, the rappers are supposed to look like this and talk like this, but I saw a rapper that looked like that and talked like that, Again, it breaks down a wall and says, well, maybe I can do what I do and put my spin and my take on it, and that can be great too. Um, so we got the jewelry thing, the clothes, the language. Um, also, just being, you know, I'm 34, and I like to take my crack at the singing and not just making one type of music. A lot of people... Um, play it safe and they just want to rap or they just want to sing or they just want to do stuff on a certain type of music and that's normally what we get. That's a very marketing based strategy. Do what you're good at, don't deviate and make a sound for yourself. Well, what if you don't want to do that? What if you like to be on a journey 
and um, you want to explore and it's just a part of you to want to try different things. That's why every time you hear me drop a song, no, the song today will not sound like the song yesterday. And I love to try a lot of different things. And there are not a lot of people in music that are daring and risk taking. I'm willing to make a new style of song that might not be as skill wise, articulate as something before it for the sake of discovering something new and building things up over a longer course of time. I find that to be cool. Um, in fact, my wife's even told me one of the things I love about your music is it's unpredictable. And if I'm willing, you know, now I need to not be delusional. You know, I need to understand that if I want to try a bunch of different things, I need to work 10 times as hard to build those skills up to prior skills that I was more natural with. But I'm self-aware enough to say, this is what I like to do and I want to take risks. And so when people see artists taking risks, they think to themselves, well, I don't have to be in a box either. I can make different music. Another thing is, is, is Christian talk. You know, there's this divide where, you know, it, and there's more divides than this one, but there's always been this divide that kind of assumes that biblical gospel centered talk belongs on boom bap and wavy more casual faith based talk belongs on trap music and modern stuff and that couldn't be anywhere far from the truth and so sometimes people think oh if i'm going to spit stuff about the gospel oh i need to go get an 80s boom bap beat or oh if i want to be wavy i need to go get a trap beat no you can be wavy on the boom bap shoot you could be wavy on country and so that's another thing that I like to showcase with my music is I like to say, no, we're going to talk Bible, we're going to talk gospel, and we're going to talk wavy for the glory of God, not for self-exaltation. Um, we're going to do those things on everything. So you'll listen to my catalog, you'll hear the boom bap, you'll hear jazzy, you'll hear country, you'll hear trap, you'll hear fusion, you'll hear poppy stuff. Because I want to show you, you don't just have to make one thing. And I want to break down the notion that uh, only the expository, biblical, Bible thumping guys are the real spitters and the more casual, lax, whatever is over here. No, it can all be together, and it's just by choice and what you choose to look at, a certain reality is the way that it is. But when you actually do the digging, you'll find out there are guys who make wavy music that are super lyrical and can get down on both sides. People are always surprised when I used to show up to the party or to the fellowship event or to the conference, and I might they might hear me on some trap singy stuff, but then I'm like, no, let's go spit, put a beat on, and people are playing all boom bap, and I'm just spitting endlessly and I'll, I'll rap for hours you know that i've been known to walk in a room with a cd full of beats and just say hey we're rapping until the, we're out of beats and, and just spit the boom bap stuff and the lyrical smirical stuff and and just go there and i want to show that you don't have to be put in a box you could do both you can make new hybrids of all kinds of different experimentation with your delivery and in choosing to be lyrical or not or super biblical or, or casual in your language use or you want to talk about a different aspect of faith or not bar stacking and want to be more simplified, all of that's allowed. The creative choices that we choose to do are not any indication of what your spiritual status might look like. Um, however, we still want to be intentional, but in that regard, in terms of the creativity, the creative choices aren't some implication about what your spiritual status is, and that seems to have been a, a big wall that needs to come down, this notion that all the boom bap guys are expository, super Bible-knowing guys and the trap guys, or the more modern-sounding guys are more casual, topical, whatever. No, that's, that's not the case. Um, and I think that came a lot from the kind of... Um, um, what would you call it? You would call it like a, um, the kind of evangelical versus the, um, reformation type of church, kind of the, you know, this kind of thing of like, what's real gospel music versus what's not. And, you know, it, there's just a lot of cultural, like appropriation involved there that we can unpack at a later time. Um, what else? Um, 
see the experimentation, um, the, the notion that you can be in a place of high status, you know, nobody can go on tour, nobody can be a big name and still bring glory to God. And st- everybody that goes on tour and gets big uh, sells their soul and, and jumps out of the faith or isn't somebody of, you know, everybody that becomes a pillar, eventually they get revealed and they're a fluke and all that. So another thing that's really important to me is being a man of character and a man of God and showcase my life in an honest way that says, hey, no, I'm going to the end. You know, I thankfully, by God's grace, I've been able to make music for 20 years. And I think that that counts for something. There's people out there that can say, I knew Conscience 10, 15, 20 years ago, and he's been the same man of character back then as he is now. And that shows for something. That goes to show that there is a way to do this thing. Um, By God's grace and by, by the Spirit of God and by the submitting to the will of God, um, you can be in the arts and be successful and be God glorifying and do it the right way. And there's not a lot of examples of that either. So there's a lot of things I want to talk about. I'm kind of getting a little bit brain dead right now. But um, again, there's just a lot of things that I intentionally choose to do with my music to bring glory to God, but to also break down a lot of walls and assumptions that we make about certain things that we see and hear about in the culture that comes with this Christian art making that have given people a bad taste in their mouth and made them kind of withdraw from the culture and kind of go do their own thing or pick their own group of friends kind of thing. And and we really just have to be bold in affirming what should be affirmed and rejecting what should be rejected. And again, this all boils down to what I was saying in the last video where we just need to be having more conversations about this stuff out loud. And we also need to be surveying more and seeing what's really out there because a lot of times you might be making assumptions based off of your little bubble, but had you been outside of that and seen what else was going on and not just let forums or websites or your Instagram feed tell you what's out in the world, when you actually go out the world and survey, you might see God's really doing stuff with people and you are a fool for making those assumptions. You are being lazy and kind of giving yourself an excuse to be less intentional because of certain ways that you've seen things take place. So those are some of the things that I choose to do in my music to not just bring glory to God, but to allow people to be free to be, uh, to have a safe place when they listen to my music and to be inspired that there's still work to do. There's still certain walls to be broken down. There's still certain things to be affirmed and rejected. There's new clarity and new fresh understanding that we can get as we make art for the glory of God that we need to share with people so that people can be free to um, experience God and have a, a real biblical perspective in how to navigate this space because it can be very difficult and it is oversaturated with kind of these cliche groups of thought and culture. So hope that was encouraging for you guys today. Uh, you have a blessed night. We'll talk soon. Peace.